Hello and welcome to Up South, your one-stop destination for all day from South India. I'm T.S. Sudhir. Our top story today is from Karnataka, where a shocking case has come off light of those who wanted to teach, taking their first step into the classroom by trying to cheat. And ironically, they were doing this with the help of a retired teacher. Ratnika Sharma reports from Bangalore. A shocking case of those who want to become teachers, taking their first step by cheating and that too with the help of a teacher. A 65-year-old retired school teacher leaked the question paper of the first ever Karnataka teacher's ability test, selling it at Rs 1 lakh a piece. 65-year-old Shiv Kumar was caught red-handed trying to sell the question paper in Northern Bangalore. The exam was scheduled for June 22. Ten candidates who were going to sit for the exam were also arrested for allegedly buying the question paper. One person by name Shiv Kumar, he's trying to sell, he's got the question paper leaked and he's trying to sell that question paper to various students for monetary purposes. So on that basis, a team of CCB uh, with the directions of the Commissioner of Police, we went there and raided uh, his house. So we could secure him along with two of his associates and uh, we found the question paper with him. Concerned educationists have condemned this act. They have pointed at inherent flaws in the education system that deter dedicated teachers from entering the profession. People who are supposed to mold the society are themselves involved in malpractice. People who try to become teachers, I don't think these are people who want to teach at the first profession. These are probably people who are looking to teaching at the last resort, not having got any jobs. And resorting to cheating shows they are not of the quality required to be teachers for our children. It's a shameful thing and I hope the government of Karnataka will take strict action and ensure that these people are banned for life. Shiv Kumar has been arrested earlier four times before for leaking question papers. Yet there seems to be no solution in sight for such discrepancies. Scams in engineering entrance tests have marred the state's education system in the past as well. While there are dedicated candidates who take the legitimate road to getting a job, there are those who continue to get away with cheating and malpractices. With camera person Madhu Ratnika Sharma in Bangalore for headlines today. Joining me now from Bangalore is K.V. Dhananjay of the Karnataka Unaided School Management Association. Mr. Dhananjay, the fact that this kind of a paper leak in the teacher's entrance examination is not happening for the first time obviously points to a systematic problem. Do you think that the department is turning a blind eye to the kind of problems with, which are happening within its own jurisdiction? Obviously, the department is very much turning a blind eye and um, you just saw that the culprit in this case was uh, you know being arrested for the fifth time so which means the culprit obviously does not take you know law enforcement seriously and that he was arrested on four previous occasions i would like to ask what happened actually after that was he not given a trial why was he not prosecuted right. and why was he not convicted so what the government is doing is obviously a matter of great concern and i think it, this is a matter of great shame to all of us well, another point, Mr. Dhananjay, which shocks be doing me so is much that more. the teachers, the candidates were, Mr. Dhananjay, the candidates were willing to pay one lakh rupees for a question paper. Now, obviously, this points to another form of rot that perhaps the education system is seen as some kind of striking a pot of gold. That is true. And, um, you know, a part of that willingness to pay a huge sum might have come from the fact that when the central government conducted its own CTET, the pass percentage was less than 2%. So it's possible that uh, you know the candidates might have felt that this would be a very difficult examination to crack. And also with the state governments getting a great deal of money under the RTE, uh, you know, teachers uh, or potential teachers might have felt, okay, it's all right to pay a big sum of money. And so the money involved, of course, is very scary. But all said and done, uh, you know, the government should have taken far more serious steps. And I would say that the government should, you know, contemplate, you know, uh, reversing this and holding a fresh examination. Right. You know, the government's theory is that uh, the right. culprit in this case, uh, you know, didn't really affect examination in Bangalore, but he did affect examination somewhere, you know, in some village. But that's not believable at all. That's absolutely not believable. Right. Here is a man who is doing it for the fifth time, so it's uh, fair to expect that he might have caused a great deal of damage right here in Bangalore. Absolutely.
Right. Uh, Mr. Dhananjay, thanks a lot for joining us on Up South on headlines today. Obviously, a retest has been ruled out by the department. Mr. Dhananjay, thanks a lot for joining us. Now, moving on to news from Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. The standoff between the two new states does not seem to be ending. The Andhra Pradesh is extremely reluctant to share the power generated by it with the new state of Telangana. This is stipulated under the AP Reorganization Act. On the other hand, the TRS government in Telangana has said that it will not release water to farmers in the Krishna Delta if Andhra Pradesh actually does not release power to Telangana state. And this has created problems for people in both states. In fact, joining me to discuss this face-off is the leader of the TRS Parliamentary Party, Mr. Jitendra Reddy, also TDP MP, CM Ramesh. Mr. Jitendra Reddy, if I may come to you, surely this is not the way neighboring states are expected to behave, especially states which have been part of a united Andhra Pradesh till very long ago. We have, we are never going to bother our uh, brotherlyhood. We have never said that. We always said whatever the loss is, whatever is their share, they, they can take away. But if you see that they are bulldozing us, they uh, themselves immediately, they have uh, lobbied, they are volunteered and they have brought uh, their ordinance on the Polavaram thing. And actually for a Polavaram thing, we, we said nothing on to that. And they themselves are trying to take away seven bundles from Telangana. So now people should, people should know that exactly who is trying to take whose. We have, we, we never, we are only going on as per the British uh, Tribunal. Whatever the British Tribunal says that this is your share and this is our share, we are ready to, re ready to give them. But uh, uh, people right. of, uh, pe people out of the world are watching that when uh, uh, BJP government and the Modi ji has become the Prime Minister, they thought when the first cabinet meeting was going, everybody thought that, you know, uh, uh, Modi will give, uh, have a, a very good meeting and he'll bring good ordinators like uh, uh, regarding POK or Article 370 or uh, uh, building Ram Temple or something that they all, all thought that something different will be there from Modi. But uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, he felt on the tribal people and he has made, he is trying to make them oh, homeless and they are right. trying to take seven mandals of Telangana and this is definitely a Andhra lobby which has worked, worked on that. So they are trying to bulldoze on this and uh, they are very, very expert, they are very much expert in publicity. They are very much an expert in publicity as you know earlier they said the chora, 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 chora so that, so that people run after them. So that this is the style they are adopting. Right. Uh, Mr. Reddy, uh, uh, you saying that the Andhra, Pradesh, the, tel, uh, the, the Andhra Pradesh government is good at doing this kind of publicity. Mr. Ramesh, the TRS government is accusing you of not, in, not keeping your part of the promise as was agreed upon under the AP reorganization agreement. Now, Hyderabad is facing power cuts, which is also your own shared capital. Why isn't the TDP government keeping its part of the promise? See, TRS still, they are thinking they are in agitation. Now, TRS is a political party, they are in power. They have to sit and discuss both the sides. They want to accuse always Simandra people. It is not correct. First of all, we have to live friendly and whatever the issues are there, amicably we have to settle. Power problem is there in both the states. And bifurcation of the power, central government, when they in the bill, they are not made properly. Even Andhra also we having more power cut. Bifurcation of power, population basis, they are not took. They took only consumption basis. It is not correct. Even more we have power cut, we have power problems in Andhra. We are very good friendly with the Telugu people. We are proud of Telugu pride. Right. Uh, Mr. Ramesh, uh, thanks a lot. In fact, both of you, Mr. Reddy and Mr. Ramesh, stay on with us because I also want to bring you some pictures that we shot at the Secretariat complex which houses both the Telangana as well as the Andhra Pradesh Secretariat. And there you see this barricading which has come out, come up, which is basically to separate the Telangana Secretariat from the Andhra Pradesh Secretariat. And it also brings uh, to the fore the animosity, the bitterness, the acrimony which is really part 
of the entire Telangana agitation. In fact, joining me now also is Mr. Parakala Prabhakar, political analyst. Uh, Mr. Prabhakar, one thought that the bifurcation process will end the acrimony between Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. But now one look at that secretariat complex, it would seem that each side is screaming that this is mine and that is yours. You see, in order to understand this, first of, all, first of all, we have to see what is the nature of the agitation that has taken place for the bifurcation. It is a hate campaign that was the basis for this and the excessive rhetoric which went into, you know, the history, the differences, you know, that kind of a thing. I think that that has uh, caused, uh, you know, these kind of a walls and barricades to come up in the minds of the leaders of the agitation. That is the first thing. And if they continue like this, I'm afraid that, you know, the bitterness and the acrimony, the, the, the bad blood continues and it is going to harm the Telugu people living in both the states. Right. Uh, Mr. Jitendra Reddy, do you think that these barricades at the Secretariat complex are a healthy sign? Definitely not. When a division has been taken, a division has to be taken properly. And uh, the, di the, the division has been made not by us, the division has been made by the central government. The, the central government has divided the things and the bifurcation has to be seen. So when the bifurcation, we have not built walls, they are not, it's not, not a, a China wall which has been built that you, you cannot cross across like that. It is only a barricade showing the allocation of the places so that the people do not get confused. Uh, the, the of, uh, when they come come to the secretariat coming into this place and going into that place so so that they'll know uh, that this is the Andhra Pradesh secretariat and this is the Telangana secretariat it it is only for their convenience which has been the, the bifurcation has been done right uh, mr ramesh uh, when the bifurcation was taking place people are talking about building a berlin wall mercifully that has not taken place but do you see this as emphasizing the confrontation uh, between employees of the two regions telangana as well as simandra no no we are always with the friendly with the employees uh, trs is a ruling government in hyderabad they are doing all this barricading business it is not good see that's why so many industries, so many businessmen going to Andhra because of uh, Naidu brand image. They don't have brand image here. Right. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Jitendra Reddy, Mr. Parakala Prabhakar and Mr. C.M. Ramesh for joining us with that perspective on this issue which is getting both sides, both states pretty much agitated. Now for a story from Bangalore where apps on our mobile phones that we use every day can also be a lifesaver. My colleague Rohini Swami reports. A 24-year-old trekker fell 300 feet while he was rock climbing. But Gaurav Arora, a software engineer from Delhi, was saved with the help of WhatsApp. For over 20 hours, Gaurav was trapped in the deep gorges of Madhugiri in Tumkur. And what saved him was this picture of the location where he was trapped, sent by him via WhatsApp to his friend who alerted the police. Gaurav was scaling Asia's tallest single rock hill when he slipped. I said that I won't do it in my hands. Then I waited for a while and he went on top of it. When he didn't come back, I called him and told him that my path is open. I don't understand where I am. Then I waited for a half an hour and he didn't find it. But when he didn't find it, I went down. I talked to some local people. They didn't remember my name, but they helped me a lot initially. I just want to say that I have a lot of help for the police and the public. I haven't seen so much public in my life. Priyank rushed to the police as soon as he realized that his friend was in trouble. He showed the same picture to Madhugiri police who were able to pinpoint Gaurav's location. All these people along with some more uh, uh, residents of uh, Madhugiri, they went to uh, start tracing these people. This person is uh, Gaurav Adara. And after they got some information over their mobile, uh, technology helped them and they were able to trace uh, Gaurav Arora and bring him back. By then, Gaurav had spent close to eight hours. Injured on his head, limbs and back, he lay limp but with the grit to survive. 
The police and the fire officials reached the accident spot at 1.30 a.m. and rescued him in a couple of hours. Gaurav has now been shifted to a private hospital in Bangalore. Well, they always say, where there's a will, there's a way. In Gaurav's case, it's just not willpower, but technology also that helped him. That one WhatsApp SMS tracked him down and saved his life. And that's how they say technology helps. Tony Swami in Bangalore, headlines today. On that positive note, we come to the end of Up South. News and updates continue on headlines today.